We begin with Road Dog, WWE's Senior Vice President of Live Events, who stirred up a hornet's nest this week when he went on his Oh You Didn't Know podcast, and I wish I didn't. He did an episode covering the Montreal screw job, with this being, again, as I said before, the 25th anniversary. Everybody's talking about the screw job. And he was asked about WWE losing Bret Hart to WCW. Now, what followed is the man's opinion, which he is entitled to. And I am not criticizing him for having an opinion. I am criticizing him for having a shitty opinion. But this is what he had to say about Bret the Hitman Hart. For me personally, I never saw what the big deal was with Bret Hart as a performer. I never understood it. He was a great worker, and I thought about saying good, but he was a great worker. He worked better than me, tenfold, worked circles around me. Don't ever think that I have told anybody that I was ever a good wrestler, because I haven't. And if you have listened to my podcast, you know that's true. I don't think I was a good wrestler. I don't think Bret was a great wrestler. I think I was a better sports entertainer than Brett was, and I think that's where the money is. I've never looked at him like, if we lose this guy, we lose the war. I never thought that for one moment. Now, I can understand people who were huge Bret Hart fans going, screw you, Road Dog, you suck. Okay, screw me and I suck. Now what? We still get to my feelings, which I, which is I never thought he was that great to begin with, so it wasn't that great of a loss when we lost him for me personally. Uh, That's professionally, really, not personally, because I didn't have any personal feelings about it one way or the other. I just didn't think we were sunk because he left. I thought we got a lot more to offer than that. And that part there, I have no issue with him saying that. And look, Brett left, and they went on to great prosperity. Not because Brett left, but because of all these other uh, factors, and Austin getting over, and McMahon going heel. So I have no issue with him saying that particular part. It's all the other shit that he said. He said, I want everybody to understand. I don't dislike Bret Hart. I just don't think he's that great of a wrestler. And I'm sorry if that hurts anybody's feelings, his especially, because I'm not trying to do that. I always thought Sean was the better sports entertainer, and I still believe that to this day. I mean, that's controversial to some, but I don't know why. It's how I feel. One of my great friends was a huge Bret Hart fan, and yet I'm not going to tell him that Bret sucks. You know what I mean? I'm not going to tell him I don't like Bret. He loves Bret. I'm just saying, cool, love Brett, uh, but you're asking me, this is how I perceive things. I told the truth, and I will do it again. I agree that if you think he's on the side of great wrestlers, okay, I'm not going to debate that, because he is a really great wrestler. (laughs) Which completely flies in the face of what he just said, but we'll ignore that. But where I draw the line is there ain't a dime in wrestling, and that's how I feel. I just feel there's more money in sports entertainment, and that is why I think the way that I think. Wow. I have heard and read some really dumb things in my 15 years of doing this show. I don't know that I have ever heard anything as dumb as Bret Hart was not a great wrestler. I know lots of people, plenty of people, who don't think that he was the best or the GOAT, which is perfectly fair if you don't think that he was. But to say that he wasn't a great wrestler, if Road Dog had tweeted this, he would win the Lifetime Achievement Award for sad tweet. There are a lot of wrestlers, wrestlers in the business right now who woke up this week hearing those comments who got into the business because of Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels and Ric Flair and Hulk Hogan and and probably even John Cena who were thinking to themselves... If the man wasn't a great wrestler, if he wasn't great at his craft, then why am I even here? Because he's the reason why I chose to become a professional wrestler in the first place. Just stop for a second and think. How many people came or became a pro wrestler? Or came into pro wrestling? Because they watched The Road Dog. I'll wait. If I wait any longer, though, we'll be wait. You'll have dead air for the next two hours. The two are not even comparable. You know, at first I thought maybe he was misquoted, because you read that. Okay, that's an actual transcript of what the man said. He's all over the place. I thought maybe he was misquoted. So I listened to it with my own ears, and nope. That's exactly what he said. 
And he was all over the place. In one breath, he says Brett was a great worker. In the next breath, he says that he wasn't a great wrestler. Then later on, he said, oh, I agree if you think Brett's on the side of great wrestlers. I'm not going to debate that because he's a really great wrestler. One second, he says one thing. 30 seconds later, he says the exact opposite. It's hard to know how he really feels. You know, years ago, Brett called him and Billy Gunn mid-carters. And they ripped into him in a, in a shoot interview. So, who knows? Maybe it's lingering resentment for Brett's comments all those years ago that's factoring into his uh, opinion here. But this, this all gets to the question of what makes a great pro wrestler. Road Dogg's father was Bullet Bob Armstrong, who most people would consider a great professional wrestler. He's in the Hall of Fame. Would Road Dogg say that his father was a great worker, but not a great wrestler? How are the two things different? How does one distinguish between the two? Now, when he says wrestler, as compared to sports entertainer, I get what he's saying. But he's using worker and wrestler like they're two separate things. And I know I'm just the mark here. He's the wrestler, so I'm not allowed to say this. But there's no fucking difference between the two. None. And I shouldn't have to be the one to tell him that. I don't know how tightly he had those braids tied for all those years, but it looks like it caused some oxygen deprivation to his brain. He's saying the real money is in sports entertainment and not pro wrestling. I've got news for the road dog. Pro wrestling is sports entertainment. Sports entertainment is pro wrestling. It may just be that he worked for Vince McMahon for so many years, he drank the Kool-Aid and he bought into the idea that the two of them are two different things. They're not. Tomato, tomato. They're exactly the same. They may look different depending on the promotion. Vince McMahon's television and Triple H's television look different than the way Tony Khan books television. But at its core, it is all the same thing. And what Road Dog, I think, I hope, is trying to say, and did so very poorly, is that he was the better showman, and he had, you know, he was the more charismatic personality of the two. Road Dog was very charismatic. Nobody would deny that. He came out later on to, to clarify his comments. He put a video out on YouTube, this 10-minute video with his co-host, with, with Ryan Katz, and he said, if you asked me to go out there and entertain a crowd, I would have, a diff I would have different ways to do that other than grappling and wrestling. I see nothing wrong with him saying that. But if you think that Bret Hart was just a mechanic and nothing more, then he must be the most successful mechanic of all time. Bret Hart made more money in three years than Road Dogg made his entire career. Should we not be counting that? <laughs> Is making and drawing money not part of the equation when it comes to the sports entertainment business? Because Vince McMahon gave Bret Hart a 20-year deal and paid him millions. Eric Bischoff threw millions more at him, although he was throwing money around at everybody. But not as much as he offered Brett. Why? Why would they do that? You know, Road Dog makes him out to sound like Dean Malenko. People respect Dean Malenko. Dean Malenko was a great worker, but people don't talk about Dean Malenko the way they do Bret Hart. Why is that? You know, when I think of what makes a great pro wrestler, it isn't just how good of a worker they are in the ring. It's their work. It's their character, it's their promos, it's their ability to, you know, draw me in to whatever it is that they're doing. MJF is one of the few today who can, who can do that. And when I look back on that person's body of work, does it make me want to go back and watch their matches? Does it make me want to go back and watch their promos? Do people still talk about what they did decades later? To me, that is the measure of a great sports entertainer. Are they a flash in the pan or does their work stand the test of time? I can list off no less than half a dozen Bret Hart matches without even thinking that I could I could drop everything I'm doing to go back and watch right now. You could wake me up first thing in the morning when I'm still deep in my REM sleep. A fucking bomb could go off. I could be groggy as all hell. And if you said to me, hey, quick, name five Bret Hart matches I should go watch, I could rattle them off to you in succession on the spot. Like I know my own name. And then I could give you a few promo segments as well. There's no money in that. Bret Hart didn't make any money for Vince McMahon? You know, when I try to think of any Road Dog matches or, or Road Dog promos that are truly memorable, I can't think of a single one. <laughs> the, 
that not, not that didn't involve Billy Gunn or the rest of DX, like when they, you know, they drove the Jeep to Nitro with the scope. You know, he was part of an ensemble. It wasn't just Road Dog. It was Road Dog. It was Billy. It was China. It was X Pac. It was Triple H. He finally got over once they put him with other people. He wasn't doing jack shit on his own. Road Dog alone, I cannot think of one. You know, the New Age Outlaws were insanely over when Austin and Rock and all those guys were on top. He had his shtick. I used to sing along with everybody else in the building during the Attitude Era. It was a lot of fun. It lasted 10 seconds, and then it was over. That's why all of Conrad's guys talk about Blue Chew every 10 seconds. But then the bell would ring, and I have no recollection of anything that stands out to me from Road Dogg's career. He sang With My Baby Tonight. It wasn't Jeff, Jeff Jarrett lip, lip sync with my baby tonight. That was like the biggest thing for years in his career. I can't think of a single thing, a single thing with Road Dog on his own that stands out to me. Just because somebody is charismatic, that in and of itself does not make them a better sports entertainer. You know, when Bret Hart snapped and he pushed Vince McMahon down on his ass and he started ranting and raving on Raw back in 97, that was a memorable segment. When Brett was sitting in his wheelchair looking up at Shawn Michaels ranting about him posing in girly magazines. That was fucking hilarious. When Brett went to WCW. And the less said about his time there the better. But you're going to tell me that his promo on El Dandy wasn't comedy gold? Or after he won the US title when he came out on Nitro and he started talking about his cat Smokey being the only fan that he had left? I think his promos got better after he left WWE. So don't tell me that Bret Hart had no personality. He had some gems. I'm not saying he was The Rock or Roddy Piper on the microphone, but he got better over time. But how many people ever bought a ticket? And I'm not trying to be a dick when I say this. This is a legitimate question. He talks about money, and that's where the real money is. How many people ever bought a ticket to a show to see The Road Dog? And how many people ever bought a ticket to see Bret Hart? I rest my case. You know, Road Dog said, opinions are like assholes. Everyone's got one and they all stink. Yes, they do. Some more than others. 